what I want to talk to you about. You just, you're on here to New York for the world premiere of Salome? Yes, yes. It opens uh, Tuesday night at the Rivoli. <laughs> Tell me what I'd like to do. Hey guys, welcome back to Famous Luxury. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer. Today we are taking a step back in time, check out the fabulous homes of one of Hollywood's most glamorous legends. None other than the stunning Rita Hayworth. Known for her bombshell looks and iconic dance numbers, Rita Hayworth was the ultimate pinup girl of the 1940s. She starred in a whopping 61 films during her epic career. Dazzling audiences in movies like Gilda, Cover Girl, and You Were Never Lovelier. Recently, one of Rita's former properties popped up on the market for the first time in 50 years. And let me tell you, this place is straight out of a fairy tale. The lavish California estate is a storybook English Tudor manor that looks like it was plucked from the pages of a fantasy novel. Listed for $3.95 million, this Hollywood Hills hideaway offers a glimpse into Rita Hayworth's world during her golden era heyday. Let's take a look at her impressive life and career. Rita Hayworth was born Margarita Carmen Cancino in Brooklyn, New York in 1918. Her parents were both performers, her father Eduardo Cancino being a renowned Spanish dancer. In the 1920s, she lived at 480 Central Park West in New York. By 1925, the family had lived at a different address in Queens, New York. Both properties remain residential today. In 1930, the family had moved to Los Angeles. By 1940, Hayworth had gotten her own property, living on Veteran Avenue with Edward Judson in LA. These two Los Angeles homes remain residential too. Little Margarita was dancing by age three and acting in films as a kid. By 18, she had moved to Hollywood and signed with Columbia Pictures. Studio head Harry Kahn decided her name sounded too Spanish, so Rita Cancino became Rita Hayworth. Throughout the 19 1930s and 40s, Rita's career skyrocketed. She danced on screen with Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly becoming Columbia's top star. But her most iconic role was as the femme fatale in 1946's Gilda, cementing her status as a Hollywood legend. Off screen, Rita made headlines for her glamorous travels and high profile romances. She married and divorced five times, including to director Orson Welles. In 1949, she became a real life princess by marrying Prince Ali Khan of the Middle East. Later in life, Rita brought awareness to Alzheimer's disease after being diagnosed herself. Since her passing in 1987, Rita has remained one of classic Hollywood's most beloved icons. As one can imagine, Hayworth traveled a lot through her career, taking trips to New York, San Francisco, Honolulu, Southampton, and more. She used her custom-made Cadillac, and you can check out her ride at the Peterson Automotive Museum. From living with her parents, to her Spanish-style hacienda, let's tour Rita's stunning homes and dig into the history made within their walls. Kicking things off, we've got the amazing English Tudor Manor Rita called home back in 1942. This fairy tale estate is on the market, so of course I had to share it with you guys. The Regal residence was custom built in 1934 by prominent architect Alan Sippel, who designed many celebrity homes throughout LA. It spans over 3,000 square feet with four bedrooms and four baths across two floors. It also has wood floors, formal dining room, separate breakfast room, a panel den with wet bar, bonus room, two car garage, two driveways, and a central interior courtyard providing additional private living space perfect for entertaining or relaxing. Stepping inside the storied manor feels like traveling back in time. Rita's home was the epitome of old school luxury. We're talking lavish details like marble floors, crown moldings, and carved fireplaces. The place is full of old Hollywood charm, boasting details like beamed ceilings, intricate ironwork, and more. Right away in the living room, you'll notice the exposed wood beams and brick fireplace, where Rita spent many memorable evenings. In fact, there are fabulous vintage photos of the starlet lounging by the fireplace in this very room. So glamorous. In the dazzling entry gallery, the paneled walls were decked out with Rita's extensive art collection. And get this. The adjacent library housed custom built-ins to display Rita's cherished book collection. Nearby, the sun streams into a cozy window nook, the perfect spot for Rita's piano and dartboard. Across the way, the dining room flaunts classic wood floors and enough space for Rita to host her fabulous parties and galas. 
Now, the kitchen is pretty vintage with its cobalt blue tile backsplash and white cabinets, but it's full of charm. Next door, the cheery breakfast room overlooks the lush gardens. Up on the second floor, a palatial wood paneled study gave Rita with her own private workspace. She could also entertain up here in the expansive rec room equipped with a wet bar and neighboring kitchenette. The master suite features old Hollywood opulence with its dressing area and Jack and Jill style bath. And get this, Rita's vanity remains in pristine condition. It's like a time capsule to Tinseltown's glory days. The sprawling owner's suite featured not one, but two massive walk-in closets. Because, hey, a golden age starlet needs a lot of space for her fabulous gowns. The palette here was ultra glam. Think silver grays and icy blues. Out back, the storybook vibe continues with an enchanting stone courtyard complete with an outdoor fireplace fit for Rita's late night entertaining. There are so many dreamy spots to unwind on this property, from the front balcony to the secret garden it's easy to imagine Rita out here laughing with friends. So why was this manor so special to Rita Hayworth? The home actually represents an important chapter in her life. Rita resided here back in 1942 when she was newly divorced from her controlling first husband. It was a time of newfound freedom and happiness for the star. How amazing is it that we get a glimpse into this Hollywood icon's world through her magnificent estate? Well friends, that wraps up our Rita Hayworth house tour. But before we go, answer this question for me. If you could have afternoon tea with any old Hollywood starlet, who would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. Would it be Rita? Maybe Marilyn Monroe? Maybe Grace Kelly? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. I'm Care the Vampire Slayer, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye! In a world where fairy tales and reality collide, a story of love, resilience, and transformation unfurled before our eyes. The story of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, a modern day romance that defied conventions and reshaped tradition. In mid-2016, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's story began. According to the couple, they first connected with each other via Instagram and were set up on a blind date. They tied the knot in May 2018 and now have two lovely children, Archie and Lilibet. However, this fairy tale was far from a smooth journey as it navigated its way through a series of controversies and thus inspired Harry and Meghan, a docu-series about the Sussexes produced by Netflix and the couple's Archual Productions that premiered on December 8, 2022. Filmed in a Montecito mansion, this dwelling is more than a physical structure, becoming a living testament to their journey, a place where laughter, tears, and aspirations converged. As we step through the doors of Meghan Markle's Netflix house, we're transported into a world of luxury that mirrors the exceptional nature of their relationship. Every corner of this residence whispers tales of extravagance, seamlessly blending modern elegance with timeless charm. Designed with a touch of regal elegance, the Mediterranean-style abode boasts six bedrooms and spans an impressive 13,599 square feet. Offering breathtaking vistas of both ocean and mountains, the residence is adorned with numerous terraces. Inside a grandeur envelops the space enhanced by a majestic chandelier gracing the great room. Then there's the arched windows that frame each view, a space where Megan was extensively filmed for the show's interviews. Located in sunny California, the home was meticulously crafted in 2006. Surrounding the home's exterior lies an expansive landscape with two acres of lush grounds adorned with enchanting walkways and blooming flowers that grace the surroundings year round. The ambiance is further elevated by the presence of towering palm trees, artfully trailing vines, a vegetable garden, orchards, and even a charming chicken coop. There's also a picturesque guest house offering a haven fit for royalty or famous visitors seeking respite under the embrace of Southern California's weather. Graced with timeless elegance, the living room here boasts ceilings with wood paneling and delicate beams. 
From this opulent space, a seamless transition leads to an upper floor loggia, an expanse that stretches across the entire length of the home. Three arched French doors open to reveal an enchanting view, an infinity pool, and a sweeping crescent-shaped lawn. These same doors frame the backdrop for Megan's interviews in the documentary. A separate dining room is distinguished by a silver leaf domed ceiling and from here a portion of the upper lodges unfolds, a space with a fireplace and seating, offering a place for relaxation. The residence's open floor plan has an Eden chef's kitchen with soap sewn sinks and marble topped island. Flowing seamlessly, this culinary space merges into an informal dining and living room. Here there are dark wide plank wood floors. The main level shows the opulent primary suite, a sanctuary with dual boutique style dressing rooms and ensuite baths. There's also an inviting pool that's perfect for leisurely dips or moments of relaxation. Among the residence's many highlights, there's a paneled study, a well-equipped gym, a captivating theater, and an inviting bar. Elsewhere, you'll find two games rooms, a five-car garage, and much more. In this mansion, each corner is a masterpiece, and every element, whether it's the soaring ceilings or the intimate covered patio, contributes to the elegance that defines this residence. Currently, this Montecito mansion is available for purchase at the sum of $33.5 million. This listing is being overseen by Ryan Malmston of Santa Barbara Brokers. Looking at the listing, you can see the captivating visuals that offer a glimpse into this enchanting property. However, the intrigue deepens when considering Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's connection to the house. Initial speculations swirled regarding them owning this residence, yet it was confirmed that the house belonged to someone else and they just rented it. According to sources, the Montecito mansion seen in the show is located about three and a half miles away from the couple's actual residence. Glimpses previously shared by the couple hint at a design similarity between the two houses, both embracing a laid back California cool aesthetic, complete with one distinctive feature, the chicken coop. Interestingly enough, the estate featured in the documentary was purchased by businessman Mark Shuloff in 2013 for around $14.6 million. As the narrative continues to unravel, the allure of this Montecito mansion remains intact, serving as a symbol of elegance and style that continues to captivate on and off the screen. However, irrespective of ownership, the mansion's stately presence becomes a part of Meghan's journey, a backdrop to the chapters of her life that have played out both in the public eye and within the sanctuary of its walls. The elegance that this mansion embodies becomes a symbol not just of architectural beauty, but will forever be intertwined with Meghan and their family. Now that will bring today's Meghan Markle's Netflix house tour to a close. But before we go, answer this question for me. Was it a disappointment that Meghan and Harry had to have their docu-series filmed in a different home, or was it wise to keep their family safe? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!